I'm a screen minimalist, although we have computers, I have an iPhone, we have a television. However, I have really tried to figure out how to use them in a way that is productive and that they are a tool and not just a source of entertainment. So in this video, I'm sharing how I use screens in my homeschool. I'm Joy Cherick and welcome to my channel. I am a homeschool mom of six and I am currently expecting number seven later in the summer. So the first way I use screens in my homeschool is Zoom with grandma on the other side of the country. So we have a couple family members, a couple grandparents who live here, and then we have one set of grandparents who live on the other coast. So during COVID, we started trying to figure out how we could get the kids kind of around more people, but then also how we could connect regularly with grandma and all of the Zoom classes and everything kind of got my wheels turning. And my mother-in-law actually used to be an elementary school teacher. And one of the things I was really struggling with was stretching my oldest, who this year was fifth grade, to just do some more writing. She really does have an aptitude for it. She reads constantly, but I really did feel like I wasn't able to give her some extra creative writing. We do nature journal, or sorry, we do narration. Obviously we also do nature journaling. Um, but for that child, I felt like, man, you know, she really has a apt aptitude for this. And I would love for that to be cultivated, but I'm maxed out. I don't have time. And of course our co-ops canceled and all of that. So I called my mother-in-law and I knew that she had been wanting to get together with the kids on a regular basis, you know, with screens and everything. And when the kids would, when they would FaceTime with her, they would like walk her around the house. It just was unorganized and not, it didn't seem like it would be very enjoyable for the grandma. And then I didn't know, feel like the kids were really getting to have a relationship with her through that. So <laughs> all that to say, we came up with the older students. My older kids are doing an, a writing class with her. So that was my fourth and fifth grader this year. And then my second and first grader are kind of emerging readers. My second grader really took off and is reading really well, but they needed more practice reading aloud. So they both would grab a book and they would read it aloud to grandma. And then at the end, grandma would read aloud some sort of picture book to the younger ones. And they would probably spend anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Some days it could be as long as two hours, but usually an hour and a half. Rotating, like, like grandma's on screen for an hour and a half, but like each child is probably on for about 20 minutes. So we got you know, five kids rotating through at different lengths of time. So that has worked really well for us. And, you know, we've had to talk about, you know, what, how to, how to handle homework and all of that. And there's been some growing pains with all of that, but overall it's been such a huge blessing. It's been wonderful to get to have my kids be able to engage with her in a more structured way, but also a more meaningful way. The next way that we use screens is for our Beast Academy online curriculum. Beast Academy online, and I've done a review, so I'll link, link to that here, is a math curriculum by Art of Problem Solving. Now, Art of Problem Solving is the best math curriculum writers, teachers, just in the world. They're amazing. They, it, they evoke, the curriculum evokes wonder. And I went from seeing my kids kind of dragging through their math to being engaged and motivated and interested. Now, what that means is we also had to learn how to use the screen because it is totally different from just opening a book and having uh, drill sheets, you know, out. So I did have to go in and 
there's a way that you can like lock certain lessons and then you just manually like open the next ones so that I could keep better track of where people were because initially they're kind of bouncing all over the place and not getting what they needed out of it. So they need to go through it like systematically and you know, I need to be checking and I get a regular email. I get an email if they are working on something and quit or if they um, advance and get a really high score on something. But the big deal for us was they had to have pencil and paper next to them because the problem comes up on the screen. Now there is a little writing pad, but that's not nearly as helpful as like they have their little graph paper notebooks and their pencil. So that's kind of my thing is making sure just having accountability that are you using your paper and your pencil? Okay, great. And then they spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour on that. My older student, I'm having her spend an hour because I noticed that once she got to 30 minutes, she was just getting going and it took her about 20 minutes to just get into the rhythm. So I, I have her go a little bit longer. And then my other students, my younger students, they um, are at about 30 minutes because they're able to, I mean, they just love it so much, my boys. Now my first grader is still just doing paper and pencil and he, they don't start until, the, I mean, it's really technically, you really don't wanna start till third grade. Um, just, it just depends on the student if they're reading well and if they are, um, really feeling fluent with numbers one to a hundred and all of that kind of stuff. So Beast Academy online really highly recommend it. Okay. The other way that we are using screens this year is I purchased actually two watercolor classes. So I bought one class, which is Anna Mason art for myself and my daughter. It's a botanical art. It's a little bit more realistic. It's a little bit harder. I really wanted to do it. And I felt like the other class was a little too easy for my 11 year old, almost 12 year old. So then I, since we loved that so much and the other kids, I just felt like the medium was so great because you've got the screen, she's telling you what to do. Then you have your paper and your paints and everything out. And, um, honestly, the kids were able to, I, I did Lily, sorry, Lily and Thistle. Um, I did their watercolor classes, not their nature, nature journaling or nature. I can't remember what they have like another one that you can do a subscription, for, but they had a deal going on and I was like, okay, I'll just get their watercolor stuff. Cause there's some nature, um, art classes within that section, but we've really been enjoying it. I've had to discipline ourselves to take one day out of the week. Usually I try to make it either a rainy day or a colder day, you know, just a day that we're home a little bit more and I budget an hour for the class and the videos are maybe like 10 minutes, some are 15 minutes and the kids will actually uh, monitor themselves as far as pausing it and wait, hold on, stop it for a second. You know, I need to catch up and they're getting so much because we're learning how to mix our paints. We're learning the names of our different paint palettes. There is a specific, the Winsor Newton kind of pad, like little uh, trays that they recommend using, but it's been so great because I, I'm not going to take all my kids to an art class somewhere and I wanted them to get better at their skills, but I'm limited in my own skills. So this was a really fun way to have a really good teacher in our house for a very reasonable price. And then also I love the way to, the use of the screen. It's a tool helping us learn something in real life 
So those are kind of the three ways we're using screens right now in our homeschool. I'd love to hear if you have found some ways to use screens productively so that it's not just entertainment, so that it is also something that is enhancing and helping you learn and grow in a new skill or a new area. Leave a comment below and let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.